Eight months ago I released a video where I remade The Simpsons Hit and Run in a week. The video got over 4 million views in two weeks, and the lead designer of the game even commented on the video. 4 million people interested in this game, 19 years after it came out. But if I can remake The Simpsons Hit and Run in a week, what could I do if I took my time? Online co-op? Could I make it open world? What is truly possible? Well, I guess we're going to find out. Alright, so I've got a bit of a checklist for stuff I want to add this time around. Number one, open world. Open world is really essential. I need to figure out a way to get all of the maps loaded into the game at one time. Back in 2003, consoles weren't powerful enough, so the maps had to be split into segments. But with Unreal Engine 5, we have the technology to make it one big open level. Number two, this time we need better vehicles. This is one of the hardest parts of the remake. Vehicles are always really complicated because there's lots of physics involved and throwing AI into the mix makes it even harder. Number three, multiplayer. I want the game to be networked this time and I just think it would be so cool to do missions together or explore with friends. Number four, I need good missions, dialogues, and cutscenes and I've spent three years developing a tool called Narrative. I'm going to use it to power missions and dialogues in the remake. Speaking of narrative, this video is sponsored by my very own tool, the Narrative Quest and Dialogue Editor. This tool will take your game from indie to AAA quality faster than anything else on the marketplace. Dialogues are as easy as designing what you want and then you use a single blueprint node to start your dialogue and the exact same goes for quests. You design your quest and play it with a single blueprint node. Right now on my channel I have a tutorial showing you how to get started with narrative so you can hit the ground running. We had our first mission, dialogue, we had cinematics, multiple characters, and even cover the save system which saves the entire state of the game's world and all of your missions and dialogues. Narrative only has 5 star reviews so far and I believe that's because it just works. I spent 3 years developing this plugin because I wanted to make sure it would work for any type of game whether it was single player, online multiplayer, blueprints or C++, indie or AAA, it doesn't matter. You get full access to the source code, and I am offering a full refund if you're not fully satisfied with the plugins, so if you are interested, the link to check Narrative out will be in the description. The last one, and the most obvious one, graphics. We need RTX graphics, remastered textures and meshes, and this is the slowest part by far. Alright, so I'm going to make a third person project. This will just give me a character to run around with while I make the open world map. And here we are in our level. It is crazy to think that this is going to become the Simpsons hit and run. But anyways, I've got a huge plan for this first video. So let me show you what I want to do. For this video, I want to check off something massive. The open world map is the most ambitious task ahead of me, but what if I could use a shortcut? Back in 2020, a modder called Kalu developed this open world hit and run map. If I can figure out a way to get this mod into the project, it saves me a huge amount of time. So that's the goal. Figure out a way to import this map into this Unreal project. I downloaded the mod and it's literally just this one file and all of the art is in this file somewhere but I don't know how to get it out. So I'm going to do some research. Simply decompile it from the mod launcher? Simply decompile it. How do you decompile it though? Oh my god, it's right there. <laughs> it's right there. Is that, is it that easy? Wow, okay, this is massive. So I have P3D files now. These P3D files are what the original Simpsons game actually used. And Unreal Engine can't use P3D files, but luckily there's a tool that can convert them into OBJ, which Unreal can use. So I converted everything, and now the moment of truth. I drag the files into Unreal and everything froze, which isn't surprising considering I'm trying to import the entire map in one go. But when I came back 20 minutes later, I found a glorious sight on my monitor. Oh my god. Wow. Wow. That's it. I mean, that's the Simpsons hit and run. Open world. That's it. <laughs> Unbelievable. There's no collision yet. I need to I need to figure out how I'm gonna put the collision in. So Unreal 5 actually comes with a car project, so if we just make a car project, can we then just import the car into the Simpsons and drive around? Like let's check that out. It's in there. It's working. Oh that is exciting. 
I <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my- like, as someone who's been a game developer for some time, let me tell you, it is never this easy to get something working like this. Shocking. Absolutely shocking that this has worked. I- I- I honestly cannot believe this. I cannot believe this. Like, this is The Simpsons Hit and Run. I just imported it into Unreal Engine and now I'm just driving around like it's n I did this in like an hour. I honestly thought this would have taken a week to get to like this point. I honestly don't have words. I do not have words. Since the textures didn't properly import the first time, I decided to start again from scratch and did a second re-import but this time with the textures linked correctly. Or so I hoped. All the textures are there. I do need to upscale them, but we're going to try and import these all. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I'm so nervous though. Like, I, I think this could go really, really wrong. <laughs> but hopefully it works. It actually looks pretty good. Like, it looks like everything imported pretty well. This is the real moment of truth, is we need to take all of the static meshes, which there are 2,000 of, and drag them into the level. This could freeze the editor. Let's try it. <laughs> okay, I'll come back in 20 minutes. See you guys soon. Check this out. The open world Simpsons is in here. To even be at this point already is absolutely bananas. Like, I've barely put any time into this and I'm already driving around the levels. The best way to instantly boost the graphics was to use some nice high quality foliage. I found this tree pack and then I just put the trees absolutely everywhere. I also used Unreal Engine 5's water tools to essentially make Springfield into an island, which I know isn't true to the original game but just makes remastering the game a lot easier. Okay, so the last big piece of making the game look better is post-processing. Check out how much better this is going to look. So, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to add some saturation to the scene, because it's a cartoony Simpsons game, so check that out. I mean, way more vibrant already. And then I'm going to mess with the gamut and the gain. So, if I turn these values down, it sort of just makes the scene feel a lot sort of richer. And then there's another setting I like called the vignette. If I turn the vignette off, you can see it just adds like darkness around the edges of the screen, but it just adds, again, it's just kind of a richness. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Springfield. It looks like the game is complete, but really the work has only just begun. We can go anywhere and work on anything we want, but for now, I think I'm just going to do more polishing. The map looks really good from up here, but there's still a lot of detail to add, and I think the first thing to do is to use AI to upscale the textures and add more detail. Alright, so I'm going to do an AI upscale on all of the textures in the game. Now, there is about 1400 of them, so this should take ages. It's probably going to set my graphics card on fire, but what it's going to do is add a bunch of detail to all the textures in the game, so that the game just looks a lot better, a lot more detail. Alright, so I'm upscaling everything. My graphics card is literally on fire, but at 5 seconds of texture, it's going to take about 7200 seconds, or about two hours to finish up scaling everything. Literally, my room is hot right now. <laughs> so, I'll see you guys in about two hours. Alright guys, so two hours later and my PC is just finishing up with the last of the textures. Now we can import them into the game and I cannot wait for you guys to see just how much better the game's gonna look. It's gonna be crazy. Look at the increase in quality. I mean, it, it has destroyed that. Look how much better that looks. Oh my goodness. That is awesome. So cool. This Mr. Burns sign is so pixelated. Oh, there's the sign there. Okay, let's re-import up to that. Come on, baby. Whoa. Yeah, that's a, that's a big improvement. Again, it's not perfect, but when you're back here, like, that looks a lot better, man. Alright, let's just keep going with it. Let's do the casino. Re-import. Oh my god, look at the casino sign, that's so much higher fidelity, wow. Hammer Hoy, wow, oh my god. That sign looks incredible. It looks like a, it looks like a person made that. It looks like it was remade from scratch, that is unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> Building a better future for him. Springfield Gasoline, welcome to Quickie Mart. Look how pixelated that one is. Let's see if that one gets improved at all. 
Wow, welcome to Quickie Mart. Oh my god, that looks so much better. Don't touch that dial, you've got cut on it. Re-import. Oh my god, wow, yeah. Alright, so I put the Homer model back in the game from the original remake, and look at these windows. I made a special shader for them just so they're really shiny. Because, like, if we have RTX graphics, you know we have to make all the windows shiny. We have to show off some reflections. But I'm liking what we have, man. I, uh, the project is looking pretty damn good for like, how much effort we've put in so far. Look at that upscaled Evergreen Terrace sign. It looks so much sharper. Something I think I'm going to try to do just for fun is I'm going to try and get these windows to be super shiny. The problem at the moment is that it gets rid of the window frame. Let me show you. So I can get it to all be shiny, but I lose the window frame. So I, want, I need to make sort of a custom texture. So all I should have to do is open this up in Photoshop, and then all I need to do is delete the middle of the window. Alright, so I re-imported it, and they're now see-through, but I have a special shader that I made for houses. And there we go! Oh my god, that looks way better! Holy... oh my god. Like, that's the thing, if you just do a little bit of work, you can get a great result by just redoing a few of the shaders instead of relying on AI upscaling. The real question is, will this work on, like, skyscrapers? If it would work on skyscrapers, that would be huge. Oh my god, it does. Well, I think you guys know what it's time to do. We need to remaster all of these skyscrapers. Alright, so I've re-imported all of my textures. Everything's see-through, as we would expect, and now it's time to put this new shader on the skyscrapers. I cannot wait to see this. And there we have it. Now our skyscrapers are looking nice and shiny. Definitely a big upgrade for the project. I'm liking it, man. I think maybe the windows could be like darker. I think maybe they're a little bit too bright, but we can change all that stuff in time. I think this is a nice upgrade for now. So I'm kind of getting addicted now to just rewriting shaders. I've made a custom shader for these lights here and I can actually make them glow and turn on. And that's a really easy fix to add. So I'm kind of just going through and adding all the simple sort of quick things that'll just add a lot of improvement right away. Another thing, if we go over here to the interior of the power plant, this room with all the toxic sludge, I put the glow material on that as well. And also all the stuff in here is a bit more metallic looking. Okay, some of the textures I've actually had to remake from scratch. Look at the difference. This is the original one from the Simpsons Hit and Run game. Even upscaled with AI, it just looks awful. And then here's the remade one that I made. So let's go ahead and put this one on there. And you can just see there's an instant improvement. The seams of these are not the best. I probably could have done a little bit of a better job, but still a huge improvement over the original shader. Okay, so I've got a bit of a problem here, right? So the Simpsons never used to be open world, and so this segment of the map had these hills in the background. But now that it's open world, these hills are sitting right in the segment. Now in the old game, if you came into this part of the map, this other part would have got loaded out, and so you wouldn't see these hills anymore. But now that's a problem. So what I need to do is model these hills out. So I'm gonna have to learn some 3D modeling. I've never really done that before, so that'll be fun. I know what you're thinking, Ruben, just delete the hills, but if I delete the hills, it actually deletes a bunch of stuff I don't really want to delete, and like these rooftops here, if I delete those, it actually deletes this one, so it's better to just modify these. Okay, so I just downloaded Blender, and here's the hills here, and I've just opened it up in Blender, so really I just have to figure out how to delete this little part here. Alright, so it looks like I can select the vertices and then delete them like that, and so hopefully... That's going to work. If I do that and then export it, hopefully it shows up good in Unreal. Oh god. Oh god, it's gone. <laughs> oh no. Uh, that's not good. Okay, so I figured it out. Blender was actually exporting everything at a really big scale, so the mesh didn't disappear. It was just way too big. So I've done the fence now. You can see it's back, but the fence is no longer over here. And the last one to do is just these rooftops, so I'm going to do them now. Alright, so I'm just going to delete all the other roofs here. And here it is, just the roof and nothing else. And you can see I've put it in the level and it's right where the old roof used to be. The only thing I don't have is its texture, so I just have to select the texture. Red roof shingles, and there's the roof done, and now I can delete. 
these and there you go yeah they're all gone and the roof is still there for the old house super cool very stoked with that so that's a big win for the project and i'm super happy with that i think we're gonna let I didn't save, did I? Oh boy, that sucked so bad. I had to redo all of that Blender stuff. But anyways, we're going to make the signs rotate now because all of the signs in Springfield rotate. So we're going to do that. Really not loving that you can see the texture on the side of the sign. I wonder how I'm going to fix that. All right, sort of a, sort of a gross solution, but I think I'm just going to give it a border and then you can't see the sides. Yeah, it works pretty well. I'm happy with that. I made the sign a blueprint which will allow me to reuse it. So I can simply just select the sign. And then I'm going to add another one here for Springfield Gasoline as well. So we're going to delete the old one. And just pop the new one on. Let's make sure this is centered, otherwise my OCD is going to be driven crazy. Man, one thing that just annoys me a little bit is the signs spin at the exact same rotation. So let's put a fix to that. By default, the sign spins at 45 degrees per second. But if we make that number random, say between 35 and 55, the signs will all spin at different rates. Now they no longer spin at the exact same rate and I will be able to sleep tonight. All right, so with the addition of our new signs, I think I'm going to leave the episode off there. This is a pretty good place to end it. We've done a crazy amount to this world. I mean, it's looking really damn good already. But of course, there is a lot more to do. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. And thank you very much for watching.